Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sandeep Sharma, your Pediatric Super Speciality Faculty at Prep Ladder SS. Finally, the NEET SS exam is done. And I know many of you are anxious right now, thinking what was the exam about. Let me be honest, uh, I have not given the exam. So whatever I'm going to discuss is based upon uh, the feedback of all of you. We circulated the forms. I talked to some of you whom I know personally, uh, based upon what you shared with me on Instagram, Telegram, and then many of your friends what they have shared in various open groups uh this is based upon the summary of that right so the detailed recall will be following very shortly but for now you need to analyze and you need to assess where you stand so this is based upon the feedback that i have got right so let us continue let us start first i want to show you uh, the, some of the messages i got don't worry uh names and the identity is not there it is just that these messages will give you an idea how people were feeling in this exam so first of all exam summary based upon feedback if you have a look so there is somebody who's mentioning sir today's exam was tough full of genetics nephro clinical scenario biostats came which is very typical for neat ss and somebody made silly mistakes but understand silly mistakes everyone makes even i make right now also while teaching sometimes uh, we always, till we are alive, we keep making those silly mistakes in our professional life, in our personal life. So it's okay. It's a part of the game. Uh, and yes, allergy syndrome came, Down syndrome came. And somebody is saying, I regret not doing Nelson part one properly, not revising prep letter super speciality notes. Okay, it's okay. Till the exams uh, results are out, let us not regret a bit. Second uh, scenario, a uh, second uh, message is everyone saying question paper was tough. I'm confused. Uh, there is somebody who had got 500 plus rank last time, but it was really bad compared to the previous exam, according to them. Part A was the hardest, another student said. Another student said that it was difficult paper compared to last year. And uh, this is somebody who has just finished uh, his MD pediatrics. All these people who have messaged, I know them personally, and they are all excellent students, excellent, good students. Uh, so if everyone is saying the same, then it means the paper was on the tougher side. And a lot of clinical questions, a lot of case scenarios, I feel nephro was asked more. So this is the summary based upon some of the messages, only some of the messages I'm showing. Then based upon uh, these messages, what, how the exam went about. So overall, it was a tougher paper compared to the previous two to three NEAT SS exam. I would say in the last five years, this was one of the toughest NEAT SS pediatrics. And let me tell you, it is not just NEAT SS pediatrics part. My fellow colleagues have told me that even the medicine NEAT SS, I'm not sure about the surgery part, medicine NEAT SS also, it was atypical. There was a lot of environmental questions over there. Biostats made an entry into that NEAT SS also. So it was you know, maybe examiners decided, let us up the game this time. So it was kind of universal in both the pediatric group as well as the medicine group. Sticking to the pediatric group, uh, you had uh, more genetics and syndromes, more general pediatrics of last couple of years, the weightage of general pediatrics and genetics had gone down a bit, but now it is back in the game. It's like, you know, uh, Virat Kohli coming back into form. Uh, nephrology is back. In Inborn errors of metabolism was there. Neonatal scenarios were more than before. Then students said it was relatively less immunology, rheumatology, and endocrinology. Yes, there was diabetics. Yes, there was a congenital adrenal hyperplasia. There was a, a GDM question. But apart from that, generally, we are getting seven, eight questions from each, at least in the previous NEET SS. This time, it was on the lesser side. And uh, CVS, Palmo, GI, Neuro were as before. Similar weightage was there. And uh, very close options were there, even in so relatively easy things. It was a lengthy paper. Many students, actually, at least two students have told me, Kisar, they last, uh, you know, in paper A also, and in the first section also, and in the last section also, we were barely able to finish the paper. And we are not really sure some of the options, uh, what we uh, really marked. And high quality concepts were needed in some of the tougher questions. And Nelson continues to be the boss. Atypical questions were there. Yes, atypical question will definitely never be from Nelson. But if you leave the, those atypical 10%, 15%, 20% questions aside, still 70 to 80% topics were from Nelson alone. Okay, moving further, uh, what was on the expected line? What was expected and it happened this time? So it was not that totally atypical paper was there. Something was asked from every system. This is something I told you in my YouTube video also. This is something I tell in my regular videos in my rapid revision and in my uh, test and evaluation also, NEET SS is a horizontally spread exam, something else from every system. 
Harajili syndrome, one question. So it's not hat trick. It is now fourth time in succession question has been asked. Down syndrome generally gives you two to three question. Similarly, two direct question and one indirect question on Down syndrome. Pediatric epilepsy, two to three questions were asked. Lysosomal story disease, two to three questions were asked. Gotcha disease is a trending topic. This is something we have done before. And I think it, the photograph that we that was asked, it, it is very similar to what we have seen in the regular videos of pediatric uh, Prep letter SS as well. Then the von Willebrand disease, always asked. DKA, always asked. The solvable questions. Few ventilation-based conceptual questions were there. But if your concepts are good, not everything will be from Nelson. Not everything can be taught in an app, any app, I would say. So if your concepts are good, you can still get the applying common sense. You can get some of those questions, right? HUS, OGA were there. They were expected lines. And the monoclonal antibody, uh, one direct and one indirect, they were there. These were all on the expected lines. What was unexpected this time? As I said, Biostats made its entry. If you have done your thesis well, and if you know uh, just a bit, and at in pediatric, uh, in uh, super speciality, prep ladder SS, we have excellent videos made by our PSM faculty. Uh, Madam has given some Biostat videos. So as students said, most of them uh, were solvable. But yes, they required reading. And it is more of a shock value because normally need SS doesn't have biostats questions or if, if even if they do get asked, it is maybe one or two question. This time up to four to five questions were there from biostats. So this is another unexpected area. Then lengthy scenarios were there in neonatology, genetics. Uh, one student said, sir, at least like eight to 10 percent questions were three to four line long. I'm not sure how true it is. You people are the best judge. But those who are listening to this and appearing for the next exam, uh, next year's exam, you need to take note. More numericals than before. Normally, numericals are hardly one or two. This time, at least five numericals were there. There were oxygenation index. There were a couple of other things. A complete recall, as I said, I will be taking up later. Integrated scenarios were there. For example, there was a, a tougher question on malaria patient, then developing cyanosis, then developing other things, and respiratory management related questions were asked on this particular thing. So it was a tougher one. Hepatitis A graph labeling. Now this is unexpected. Why unexpected? It is not unsolvable. But normally when you have to look at the graphs and graph labeling, generally we associate it with hepatitis B. But hepatitis A graph loading labeling was asked. This is what I got the review. So it was a bit, you know, atypical. Then tough questions were asked on P53. Close options were there in inheritance patterns. And uh, there are two schools of thought. Some people are saying it was simple autosomal dominant and excellent dominant. And some people are of the view, no, sir, it was not there. I have no idea what these uh, inheritance pedigree charts were. You people are the best judge. And a message from this exam. Those who appeared in this exam, those who have taken this exam, it was a tough exam. Cutoff is likely to go lower. So even if you have made a few mistakes, a few questions have gone here and there. It's okay. You are very much in the game. Those preparing for 2026 or 2027, including INISS uh, April 26 and NEET SS 2026, or those who are entering into uh, MD right now, maybe 27, 28, they'll be sitting. Rote learning and only one-liners won't work. It's not a typical one-liner based paper. They are checking your knowledge. They are checking your clinical acumen. Uh, the only thing constant every year is change in weightage. Last exam, cardiology was, you know, cardiac embryology was ruling the roost. This time, hardly any question on cardiac embryology. There were questions on PSVT, there were questions on arrhythmia, there were questions on congenital heart disease, but they were the traditional questions, not the atypical question. And this time, genetic syndromes and those things have become uh, so every year, there will be slight change in the weightage. Something will become more important. Somebody with the balanced preparation will always do well in this exam. And read Nelson. There is no replacement to Nelson. Whatever number of courses you may subscribe to, if you don't read Nelson, you will face trouble in this exam. And you can't read Nelson in six months, two months, three months. Start reading if you have time. Build concepts. You can take the help of prep ladder SS pediatrics videos. All the videos I have recorded, they are every single one of them are based upon Nelson. But again, Nelson, those videos are never the replacement for Nelson. Build the concepts and listen to your mentors, people who are taking the exam, people who are seeing the pattern every year. By mentors, I not only mean myself, yes, I'm including myself, but I'm also talking about your seniors, your uh, DM senior residents who are appearing in the exam. Talk to them, see how the pattern is changing and modify your preparation a bit. Uh, for 26 and 27 aspirants, 
uh, there is a flash sale happening. Super speciality elite plan up to 25% off. It's just, uh, you know, small little thing uh, SS people are doing before the new year sets in. Uh, you can use the code crack exam. You can take, you know, enroll into it in case you feel uh, the course is going to benefit. It is going to benefit to you. But again, a course can be only as good as your own hard work and your own clinical learning, right? So if you're interested, uh, you can go ahead with it. And what about the recalls? Sir, recall kab karoge? Ye to bata diya aapne. In works. Trust me, it is in works. It will come out shortly. I was traveling. You can see me. I'm wearing this. I had taken one interview uh, of a INISS stopper just now. And I'm right now recording it in the evening of uh, 27th of December. Recall, if all goes well, will be out very shortly in the next, I would say, less than 24 hours. Right? So, even if I the exact options are not there, because the number of people taking the exam is not what is important is you understand at least the topics and the pattern which is going to be asked. So don't miss the recall. It will be out on the Prep Ladder SS YouTube channel. Summary will be out on the YouTube channel. Detail uh, obviously will be available for the subscribers. Don't miss it. And uh, best wishes for the results. You are not out of the game. And those are targeting the next year exam. Keep learning. Bedside learning, a bit of Nelson, a bit of uh, learning from your teachers, from your patients, and a bit of common sense still works in the Remember that. Take care, everyone.